Welcome to Joy in Our Town. This is a program that is provided by Trinity Broadcasting Network for the purpose of helping you, the resident of Central Florida, have a better understanding of what life is about and how we can enjoy life and function and find blessing and privilege and service in this seasons of our life that God has placed us in. If you're a guest in Central Florida, you're visiting from around the world, welcome. TBN is so glad that you are here, and we as citizens of Central Florida want you to have a good time right here in our community. But this program is all about finding reasons to have a smile on your face. Trinity calls this joy in our town, and the reason there's joy in our town is because there are people that are doing good things and helping us to discover that God is never finished with us that the news that uh, our local news networks are telling us is not all bad because the good news of God's ex love and acceptance and forgiveness is what makes us a people who can be joyful and happy even in the midst of the circumstances of life. And so that's why you've joined us. I am so delighted to welcome Dr. Faith Frederick to us today. Faith, welcome to Thank Joy you. in Our Town. Thank you. And I can see it on your face. You've already got joy in your heart. Yes. You are the founder and president of Faith Christian University. Uh, tell us about Faith Christian University and what was it that birthed that ministry in your heart? Well, at a time when many people would be saying, I'm retiring, my husband and I decided to refire. Okay. But because we had this passion to help people. We felt that people have value and wherever they are in their life. Uh, we started doing Bible studies and different things, working in the local church, but there seemed to be a real draw to go a little deeper. So through a, a just networking with people and through really researching on our own, we started a little Bible stu institute right here in Orlando. And today that has grown into Faith Christian University where we offer uh, Bible education, leadership training, ministry training, Christian counseling, and we do have degree programs. So that was kind of, it was a growth process. You know, seasons of life, you mentioned that in your introduction, and I am putting a lot of emphasis on this because my season has changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think that a lot of people, though, when their seasons start changing, we tend to think, and the whole cultural society puts the emphasis on our productive years. Right. But what you're saying is, is that as an individual, you and your husband, when you began to face the, those years beyond what the world says is productive, life is productive until the day you die. Absolutely. And so you've tried to focus in, in that particular direction. Uh, tell me your background prior to founding this university. What did you and your husband do? Well, basically, we were in the ministry. As a young girl, I received a call that I felt I didn't know when, I didn't know where, I didn't know how, uh, but I just hungered after, you know, serving sure. the Lord in ministry. I had a godly mother, and so I just began to walk that out and spent many years in ministry and Bible teaching and uh, growing in my own knowledge, and uh, then my life took a, a challenging turn, and, you know, I was faced with the fact that do you stop here or do you believe that you can overcome? And the way I overcame that challenging season was I decided to go to school. Wow. I decided to say, you know what, rather than going under, I'm going over. And even though I was beyond, you know, my children were adults and uh, grandchildren were on the way, but I realized I needed to reach out beyond myself. So I laid everything down and I went to Bible school, a wonderful school that just kind of retrained, brought me into a new level of thinking and broadened my world. And I think that's, that's, what, that's a key phrase there, the broadening your world, because the world is ever, you know, all truth is God's truth. So we, none of us have arrived in that process of, of redeveloping our lives. So when we talk about... Uh, aging adults and continuing education, what, what does continuing education really mean to that person? When you talk about Faith University mm -hmm. and what you're doing, mm -hmm. what would that look like for a person that may say, you know what, Faith, I'm a, I am a person that would like to do what you're doing. I've, instead of going under, I want to go over, I want to learn. What, what would that look like for them? 
Well, first of all, it does start with knowledge. And thank God, there is so much out there. The options are just everlasting almost to where you can go to do that. You can sit in a classroom. You can do online. Just all different types of, of ways to bring it to you in a way that you can really glean from it. Um, I, I just am a proponent of the local church. I think that's the place to start. But Faith Christian University, our demographics are really for what we call the professional, working adult, and more. Because these are people that have kind of been there, done that, and they've reached a point in their life saying, you know what, I, I want to really bring knowledge into my life so the rest of my life will be the best of my life. So if so, those people that come to you, so what would they actually, would it be um, the courses look like? So what do you offer them when they step into that in terms of, do you have, is it ministry training alone or does it have a broadening kind of view to education? Well, our what we feel Faith Christian University is here for is to bring Bible education. Okay. We don't just go down a, a certain denominational lane. Mm -hmm. We are broad in that, that we believe the Bible mm -hmm. and we teach the Bible. Good. Our teachers and our instructions are really people in ministry, our pastors who've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. They're, they've given years to, to studying. They have uh, series that they have done that make tremendous courses. One of the first classes that everybody has to take is knowing God mm -hmm. because we reached a point where after 9-11 we realized a lot of people don't know who God is. That's true. So we implemented this class. It is life changing and of course our text is A.W. Tozier mm -hmm. uh, and books like that that bring a tremendous foundation to people in order to go to the next level of your ministry calling, of your career calling, and to propel you into really the destiny that maybe you've hungered and longed for for years. I, um, I know that, again, this programming often uh, times attracts individuals that have reached a point in their life that they may not feel of great value anymore. Uh, let's talk about that for a moment. Do you, do you find that you're meeting more and more people that feel like maybe it, life has passed me by and I don't have anything to offer? A lot of people do feel like that, but they don't get around me very long. That doesn't, re that doesn't do well with me. Okay. And I love to inspire people. I love to mentor people to say, you know what? You, where you are in this season, even a challenging, dark season, if you will look forth with the eye of faith, you will see that the grace of God can take you into a new season where you can serve your community better. You can serve your church. You know, I, I coined this frame years ago, and it's not original with me, but I said, you know, I, my greatest ministry to myself is to make sure that I stay part of the answer, not part of the problem. I, and I ache for older people that kind of get crossways in their attitudes and so forth, feeling like they're, they, they really are not relevant because there's a lot going on that's pretty intimidating. But you know what? You just have to stay ahead of the curve and say, you know what? With all this technology, with all that's out there, I'm going to use it for me. Mm. How, uh, how is uh, Faith University helping people to rethink church? Um, there are a lot of people, those of us that have been around for a long time, and so I too, my father was a pastor and I grew up in the church so, uh, a, a few decades ago in that process. Church is very different today than it is. How does the educational system, would it help an aging adult to rethink church and God in a way that they may feel that um, it's not as negative as they think it is? Well, I say this. I, I, of course, came up in a more traditional right. way of having church and uh, just our whole walk with the Lord. But I, I said this last Sunday. I was able to minister in a, in a local church, and I said, you know what? At my age and where I am, what we see here, the vibrancy, the happiness, the joy, the music is different than what I was raised with. But guess what? It's not about me. It's about all those young adults, those children that are out there clapping their hands, lifting their hands, enjoying it as this is what I say. The message cannot change, but methods are going to change. Yeah. Good. And, you know, if, if it's not my in my comfort zone, I, I teased them and said, I would love to take needle and thread 
and sew up every patch jean, you know. <laughs> My mother could have had a ball doing that. But you know what? It doesn't matter as long as the gospel, as long as the Bible, that Bible education is what we need because really we've reached a point where many people are biblically illiterate. Mm. My mother, it's interesting you said that. I have a 94-year-old mom, and she said to me the other day that she had gone to church and she didn't know any of the music, and, and that she said those exact words. But she said, you know, son, when I looked over and I saw uh, young people with their hands raised, I realized that it's not about me, and though it may not be what I know. Isn't it interesting? We all tend to go back to when we our faith was founded. That becomes sort of the realm by which yes. We, yes. we feel most comfortable, and as time passes, things change in the midst of that. But I, um, let, let's go back. What are some of the benefits that people will have, uh, seniors will experience as uh, aging adults as they move into education? Um, how, how would they even inspire? What if they said, I don't have a GED? What would they do? Could you help them with that? Absolutely, absolutely. And if you are uh, obviously beyond that age, your 30, 40s, 50s, 60s, if you need to go back, I think it, it makes for a real sense of accomplishment because we've had some older people. We'd say, you know, you just look into it. We'll help you. And find out they were missing something so uh, minimal and when they got it they were so proud it was like an achievement and I'm thinking of one lady in particular she was so down on herself and she said I have been so hindered because I don't have my GED we were able to help her facilitate that but of course she had to take care of that ended up she got her master's degree and was able to go into the public school as a substitute Wow. And she was able to sew into their lives, but also make some money that she needed to make. Wow. Um, when, you, um, when you talk about uh, these, a these uh, aging uh, adults in the midst of it, what's the oldest student that you've ever had or you presently have at Faith University? Oh, probably 70. 70. In so fact, we've got, we've, we had a gentleman that stayed with us for several years. He was so absolutely determined he was determined. He came to us in his late 60s and 70s, and he actually went through the whole program and got his doctorate. Wow. Well, that, that's amazing. Uh, Dr. Faith, thank you for joining us. We're going to have to take a quick break, and we're going to come back. But there has been, on the screen, there is a website that you can go to. We're going to talk about what you can find there when we come back. So give us just a moment. Take a break. We're going to be back. Dr. Faith, uh, Frederick is going to continue to speak with us about continuing education for aging adults and what you can expect and how it can transform both your life and the people around you. So you stay with us. We're going to take this break. Break, and we'll be right back. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope, and we're trying to give you another reason to smile today. There are good things happening in Central Florida, and one of them is uh, Faith Christian University, and the founder and the president of that is Dr. Faith Frederick. So, Faith, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Um, you have a, to, for those that may have just joined us, you are a president and leader of a college, a Christian college here in Central Florida, in Orlando, and you basically focus on helping individuals that want to go back and get education or um, they want to develop the faith side of their lives. And it was all because you were found yourself in the same yes. place in your life. So um, when we think most people that are older tend to think traditionally. Yes. So that means I, I'm going to go to Bible school, so i got to pack up and go. Or What would be the, the good things that they can smile about in terms of education today differing than what they may traditionally think education is like? Well, we kind of uh, realized the handwriting was on the wall uh, when we got into the 2000s and 2007. 
uh, I can't go into it. It's, it's just a miraculous story how brought, God networked us with the right people. And we began to videotape all of our classes with a live uh, a, a student body. And uh, we've been doing that since 2007, still continue to do it on Monday nights. We have a main campus that meets on Monday nights here in Orlando, but then what we videotape there before that live student body, we make available online through a, a total uh, online program, which people are getting used to that with online education. It's state of the art, but rather than reading and reading and reading, which could be a challenge to some older people, you're sitting there watching that same class that was taught live that is so relevant and can add so much dimension to your life. Mm. So you're saying that if they have a computer, they can, they can go to school in their own house. Right, in their house. Wow, that's amazing. So that's encouraging news. So it changes. Technology sort of has changed all of education. It's amazing. It? And two, some of the challenges are, how does it keep my interest? I'm, I'm not good with reading. Now, we do have reading that is required, but it's all inspirational. It, it adds to the class. But just the typical challenges of what they think of online education, we made the decision that we wanted our classes to be live. And uh, it's worked. We have students all over the country. We have pastors that are coming back because they want to continue their education on. We have great leadership, a leadership institute and classes that will help uh, to uh, own your personal growth and also in your leadership uh, opportunities that you have. Mm. Um, who is the candidate? Who, who would be, who is right for what you're doing? When you think about uh, the people that are viewing our program, is there any particular kind of person or sort of help people? Because they're saying, they may be watching thinking, well, you know, that's a, for a highly spiritual person right. or a uh, wealthy person. What, what would be the demographic that you would, would say, these are people that could step into the program? Is there a demographic for that? I think there's several. And one would be that person that, They've suffered sickness or a challenge or whatever, and they realize that they need to uh, to grow themselves spiritually and with their knowledge of the word. And uh, maybe money short, but our our school is very. We keep the cost down because we know that our demographic are people that are really striving to grow in the knowledge of the of the Bible. And then you have the demographic where people have maybe served in ministry or served in their career. They may have other degrees, they may have, but yet they desire to go further and get their master's and doctoral. We have that, that demographic there. So really it can be fit uh, for each level. If it's just the person that wants more Bible knowledge or they want to be part of a community wow. of people that want more Bible knowledge, uh, that it, we try to do it in such a way that it is very manageable in their routine, uh, but also very affordable. Hmm. When uh, I want to go back to you because I think that your your story is quite interesting. If they missed the first part, you talked about you went through sort of a crisis in your life, and that's how uh, this university came about. Um, I, I'm interested in knowing when you when you went back to school and you got this education and you came out of that. Uh, did you ever think? Number one, that God could take you from brokenness back to a successful life and obviously then make you the president of a school. So, I mean, I think that's number one. I want to hear that personal journey. And number two, um, what values have you found in yourself because of your educational journey that you went back even later in your life that brought about a whole new value system for you and appreciation of life today? Is, is that, are those two good questions for you? Excellent. And this is a faith-based program. Right. So therefore, it's all about faith because there, there certainly is, a, there's going to be highs and lows, but if you know that you know that you know that God does not fail, uh, you may hang by thread, and I've been there, done that. But even though I was getting in Bible and knowledge, it was very intimidating. But I had someone who encouraged me and said, just sift through, just eat the hay and spit out the sticks, just absorb what you can. And God is always so gracious. And that's what I did. 
Then what it does, it sets you up and positions you when you take a stand of faith uh, in other words, that's between you and God. Right. I don't want to over to, that's between you and God. I'm going to stand with God. I'm going to trust him. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where, but I know that he has a purpose for my life. Then I believe at that moment you get God's attention and he will come in with his grace and then through a process of networking with people, positioning yourself with other people, uh, getting into a good, strong local church with a good pastor and his wife that will assist you, you begin, and then the doors will begin to open. And then you're ready. You're prepared. See, God, when he calls, he also can qualify. And it just began to be that every door that opened, we just walked through it as faith. I mean, I didn't really have a whole lot to prepare me for this. But I learned. I was a quick learner. And I had to go back to school how to run a university. Yeah. And, I, and I took a lot of clues and information from others. And then this is where we are today. Well, I think that what uh, Dr. Faith is uh, sharing with us is, is you're reminding us that if God could take Moses at the age of 80 and use him to lead for 40 years, he could still take us at yes. an older yes. age in the yes. process. Yes. Um, I, I'm interested also in, can you give us some examples? I, I know we can't share names on, on television, but talk about maybe two or three people that you have observed through your school that have gotten an education and are now making a difference in the world in which they live. Uh, maybe in a church or in a community. You got some people that have jumped to mind that you might could just sort of describe for us so that a person could say, well, you know, well, I'm not going to found a, a, a Bible school, but I uh, maybe, just mm -hmm. maybe God's, I've got a vision inside of me yet. Right. I want to do something. I saw a Facebook message the other day from one of our students, and he is works in a lawyer's office and uh, has been there for years. He's got a lot of achievements and everything, but he came back to us. He happens to be uh, Latino and stays in that community with his church. But an, an, a Jose is, an, is a wonderful uh, uh, partner in ministry and education with his local church. But I saw this Facebook. There he was ministering in a, in a retirement community. Wow. And this is a new shift for him. Then we've got others that do prison ministry. Uh, some go on and pastor. We've got several uh, students that they went on and attained their educational goal. They serve with the local church. Now I heard this year they're breaking out and starting their own church. Wow. Well, it, again, I guess you, what you're saying is you're never too old. Never. And, uh, and God is never too limited to be able to take your life and to do something in a very substantial way. You know, I, um, I pastored for 43 years in my life, and so I, I know people, and I know as we get older, it is a sense that um, many have, whether we say it or not, that sort of life, you know, I've, I've lived mm -hmm. my life, and mm -hmm. it's sort of passed me by. Uh, and, and I want, before we have to, to leave for today, I want you to take a moment and I want you to just talk to some folk because I know, I sense in your heart, you've got a pastor's heart. I want you to talk to folk about their worth and value to God and not to give up. And then would you be so kind to pray for them before we mm -hmm. have to, to mm -hmm. sign off? Would you just take a few moments and talk to people just from your heart to theirs and encourage them mm -hmm. that this may be the next step in their life? Well, there's a quote that I often use, and it happens to be in the book of Ecclesiastes. And it talks about the different seasons. And we know that God, He's the one that created the seasons. But I've gone through many seasons in my life, let me tell you. Some expected, many expected, same seasons you've had, but some have been unexpected. But what we do with that unexpected season or that personal challenge or just simply getting older and, and just getting what we call a rut, I can tell you from personal experience, stop, take note, and say, this is not where I want to stay. And I believe there's a new level for each one of us. Just recently, I, I went to a new level. I became part of the John Maxwell team and have been certified. Uh, and then I wanted to bring a new level to my personal life, to my children. And then I was privileged to go to Paraguay with a great team and minister over there with someone that has just put such value in my life and helped me to grow up. You know, you never grow too old to learn. 
It is so important that we reach out beyond ourselves. You know, we're just media driven. Everything is so media driven. Make that media work for you. Make it work for you. At the end of the day, say, what have I taken in that will just increase my value, my influence? What have you done today to increase your influence in this world? I think that's very important. And that's what's speaking to me. So let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your mercy and grace. We depend upon you, Lord. We trust you, Lord, to lead our steps and to guide our way. So I ask you right now for that hungry heart that you would speak to them, Lord, and infuse them with new inspiration, infuse them with new drive and determination. No matter what challenges they have faced, Lord, we can put our trust in you and you will guide us into all truth and make our way straight and plain. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Dr. Faith, thank you for coming and spending 30 minutes with us here on well, Joy in Our thank Town. thank you for having uh, me. You, I wish everybody had your smile and, uh, <laughs> and the joy that you have in your heart. And that's the reason why Joy in Our Town is here. It's because of people like Dr. Faith Frederick at, at uh, uh, Faith Christian University that allows for us to know that our community is filled with lots of reasons to smile. And so each week we come here, TBN is a, so gracious to provide this programming to introduce ministries like Dr. Faith and Faith Christian University so that you can have a smile on your face. I just remind you, if you're aging like I am, never forget, there's no, the word retirement isn't in the <laughs> Bible, all right? That God has a plan for you. And his plan for you is to be strong. I pray for a Caleb kind of life that even when you were 80, that you would say as Caleb said, give me this mountain. I'm not going to let age and life stop me from having a passion and an aspiration to move forward. And so that's our encouragement to you. Lastly, I just want you to know that Trinity Broadcasting Network is praying for you. We believe in you. We care about you. And God loves you. He really does. He has a wonderful plan for your life. So don't give up on him and don't give up on yourself. Well, we've got to go for today. We'll be back next week. So until then, don't you forget it. Jesus loves you. He really does. Bye for now. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.